Who's ready to rock today, Fire Nation? JLD here with another audio masterclass for you. And this is going to be a doozy. I mean, they all are, but this is a doozy as well. It is win new customers, how to identify your market and attract more prospects using content, Facebook ads, sales funnels, and retargeting with Gene Ginsburg can't wait for this. It's going to be a blast. So who is Jean? Well, she's a number one best-selling author, serial entrepreneur, digital marketing expert with more than 10 years of industry experience helping, helping companies scale revenue, optimize sales, and marketing processes, and improving their productivity. She is the CEO and founder of JeanGinsburg.com, a digital marketing education company, and Gimbal Digital Marketing, which is a digital marketing agency. Her clients range from broad name Fortune 500 companies to to innovative startups. And we're going to dive into this wonderful masterclass as soon as we get back from thanking our sponsor. Fire Nation, it's time to take control over your income. To do that, you need to have the skills to solve a serious problem in the marketplace, like helping businesses acquire more customers. That is a skill that most companies don't know how to do profitably because they don't teach it in schools. My friend Billy Jean is a master when it comes to acquiring customers for all sorts of businesses and has charged up to $30,000 a month to provide this simple but not easy service. To learn how you can do this too, visit Watch billysvideo.com to access his free training today. So Gene, say what's up to Fire Nation and share something interesting about yourself that most people don't know. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for having me on the show. I'm really excited. Hi, everybody. Hi, Fire Nation. And one thing that most people don't know about me is um, right after college, I worked as a paralegal for a couple of years. Um, I really thought that that was after a couple of years, really realized that was not the path I wanted to take. And that's how I ended up in marketing and digital marketing subsequently. But probably most people don't know about me that I was, I worked in the legal field for a couple of years after college. Interesting. What is the typical path of a paralegal? Like what happens next? Um, honestly, there's really only two paths. Either you stay a paralegal for the rest of your life, or you can go to law school and become an attorney. <laughs> oh, got it. Got and it. And I did not want to do either. <laughs> hey, I spent one solid semester in law school and then uh, dropped out. So I'm with you, girl. Definitely hear that. <laughs> uh, I have I have a similar story. I went to um, business school for a, for a quarter and then I dropped out. So I'm, a, I'm an MBA dropout. Well, Fire Nation, I hope that you're glad that both Gene and myself are dropouts because the the audio masterclass that we're dropping on you today is going to be so valuable. It's called Win New Customers, How to Identify Your Market and Attract More Prospects Using Content, Facebook Ads, Sales Funnels, and Retargeting. These are all things that I love, that I'm passionate about in Fire Nation. If you're going to be a successful entrepreneur to the level that you want to be successful at, these are things that you need to be rocking as well. So let's win new customers. So Gene, let's start off with actually just maybe starting off by you just sharing in 30 seconds or so, what kind of the main focus of this is? Like I just shared the title, what is the focus gonna be? Then we'll dive into the specifics. Sure, absolutely. And I think you did a, a really good job of, um, of the introduction because that these are the points that we're gonna discuss. But basically this is, uh, taking a step back, it's a digital marketing framework that I have been refining over the last several years since I've had my digital marketing agency and consultancy. And uh, this is what's been working for uh, my private clients. And then I decided to put it in a book because it's been working so well. And I thought, hey, this would be a good way to share it with entrepreneurs, startups, um, businesses out there who want to really commit to digital marketing and use that as a way to grow their business. Cool. So let's dive on in. How do we develop the ideal customer profile and then dissect the customer's pain points and frustration? I mean, these are steps we have to take. Developing the ideal customer profile and then actually dissecting their pain points and frustration. So break that down for us. Sure. So I would say that identifying who your ideal target market is, is going to be the first and very important step. So a lot of times when I engage with uh, a client, new client, and that's the first step that we go through uh, before we even get any digital marketing set up, before we even set up first, the, you know, any campaign on Facebook or anything like that, um, we go through this. And, and I find that a lot of companies, a lot of brands don't know who their ideal target market is. And that's such 
a critical and pivotal point in your digital str- or any strategy. I mean, it could, any marketing strategy, whatever it is that you're doing. But let's say in this case, we're going to focus on on digital marketing. So um, having that as before you even get into setting anything up um, is going to be crucial. And so I break it up into three points when I talk about your ideal target market. So the first one is going to be level one, and that's just going to be a really basic stuff, things like demographics, you know, geolocation, um, age, gender. Um, so really just kind of the basic information. We want to narrow things down when we're um, looking. So if you're, let's say you're a local business, you only want to maybe look at a certain, you know, geo metro, uh, geo location. If you're going after a certain demographic, let's say millennial moms, then you want to be only looking at women, you know, a certain age, let's say you know, 30 to 45 or something like that. So, uh, that's, uh, that's a first cut as I call it. So we want to narrow things down and really the, the I guess I would take a step back here is that the, the key here is that we want to, you know, we want to get down to a niche, uh, a niche customer profile. You know, the, the saying is if we market to everyone, we market to no one. So, um, I knew, I do get a lot of pushback from clients when they're like, no, I don't, I don't want to get down too small, but really it's important to start off with a niche, um, customer profile, and then you can always expand later. So level one, just demographic information. And level two is where we get into what are their goals? You know, what are their challenges? So what are they experiencing now? Um, what are their frustrations? Why, you know, wh- what's going on in their lives? And then um, tying in our product or service. So how can our product or service be helpful to them? How could it solve their challenge? How can it solve their uh, pain point? Um, and then uh, level three is uh, where are they hanging out? So depending on the, the demographic and who your target audience is, um, there's um, I would say there's specific platforms that cater to certain um, individuals. So let's say if you know if you're looking for maybe teenagers and twenty somethings, you might be looking at Snapchat or Instagram. If you're looking for millennials or Gen Xers, then probably Facebook. Um, so it's going to kind of go into those buckets, but at the same time, we want to dig even deeper. So, um, are they going to, let's say if they're a B2B, are they going to certain conferences? Are they following certain gurus? Are they following certain blogs or websites? So going even deeper into what it is that, um, they're kind of doing on a daily basis, because it'll be much easier for us to find them when we know uh, where they're hanging out. Fire Nation, ripping through this one more time. Demographics, number one, so important. You know, age, location, et cetera. Number two, what are the goals? What are the challenges? What are the frustrations? And make sure that you're tying in your product and or service in this as well. This is the time you're trying to introduce that stuff. And then number three, where are they hanging out? Where are they hanging out? This is stuff that you need to be collecting. This is such important data. So that was me kind of just wrapping things up. Anything else on this point specifically, Gene? No, not on the customer profile. I think that's a a good way to get started if you have not developed your ideal target market. Creating content, Fire Nation, is so key. I mean, I spend so much time personally creating content because it is so important. But I think that we need what we need to talk about right now is creating content that actually addresses the pain points and or frustrations of these people who are trying to reach and doing that in the form of videos, podcasts, blog posts, articles, case studies, all these different things. So what are your thoughts on that, Gene? How do we make this happen in a meaningful manner? Yeah, absolutely. So content is... I feel such a, a key point in our brands now. And I would say if you're not creating content, then you're definitely lagging because your competitors are definitely creating content. So if you're listening to this, um, I'd say content is going to be, and has been for the last several years, really um, the way to get your point and your message across to your target audience. So um, I would say creating um incorporating that ideal target market that we just talked about and uh, your customer profile and incorporating that information into your content. So for example, if you're identified certain pain points that your target market has, so for example, 
for me, you know, my uh, I'm uh, my audiences are entrepreneurs or startups who are looking for digital marketing or who want to grow their businesses through digital marketing. So, one of their pain points might be, you know, they're they're too busy to learn digital marketing. So, I could, for example, create a blog post or a video that addresses that um, and kind of talks about what is it what it is that I do, you know, my background, and then how um, how does my product or service address that. So, um, it's critical. To, that's why the first step is always identifying who your target market is because we want to weave that information and weave that um, message into our content. And I would say, you know, video has been very popular lately. If I scroll through my Facebook feed, I'm seeing video pretty much all the time. I'd say like 75% of my uh, of anything that I see on my Facebook feed. And Gene, to, to jump in here for a second, I think it's important to talk about the whys on this as well. Like we have to be thinking about why are these platforms like Facebook showing video so much? Because guess what? They have the data. They know that people like Gene and myself, we actually will spend more time watching a video than we will skimming some very long form written text. Like that's just the reality of most people. So Facebook has that data. So those are clues. Success leads clues. You're hearing me say this a lot. So when you're seeing Facebook rewarding this type of stuff, there's a reason for it. Do it. So back to Eugene. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's a good point. You know, why why social media and why Facebook? Well, even just a statistic that I um, I was giving a presentation recently, and one of the stats I came across was um, on average, people are spending 20% um, of their time on social media. So going back to the customer profile, like where are they hanging out? Well, um, like I said, most of them are probably hanging out on social media. So that could be Facebook, Instagram, um, Snapchat. Um, so we want to, of course, be using the platforms where they're hanging out to get our message across. So going back to content, um, like I said, video has been very uh, popular lately. And it's just an easier way to get your message across yeah, you know, without having to write uh, long blog forms and also um, I think it's it's much easier for your audiences to engage with you if you're on video because it's a it's a much a stronger connection um, when they see you on video versus if they're just reading a blog post or an article. So um, I'd say video is a good way to get started, whether whether you're in B two B or B two C, and then after that, making the content. Um, more um, as they as they kind of engage with you further and ascend through the process, um, making the content more valuable and maybe a little bit even longer. So maybe longer videos if they've already engaged with your um, first initial, let's say, explainer video. And then let's say if you're in the B2B space making um, maybe perhaps case studies or white papers, that, um, uh, additional content that can make your uh, product or service stand out more and provide additional information. So I'd say that's um, that's key components in terms of how to you know how to create your content and what are, what are the types of content that are working best these days. So one thing that I really want to make sure you understand, Fire Nation, is when you're creating content, like for instance, video, and this is why I'm a huge fan of creating video content, you can then repurpose that. You can pull the audio out of that video and you can use it in other ways like podcasts, et cetera. You can take one minute clips from that uh, that video you've created and up- upload it into, you, uh, into Instagram. You can put that onto YouTube. You can get a transcription and use that as a basis for a blog post. So that's why video is great to have as kind of like that top of the waterfall because then you can repurpose it in so many different ways. Create one great piece of video content once, then you can literally be off to the races. So, Gene, one thing that I think a lot of people need to be talking about is engaging the prospect with content. Actually bring them into a funnel where we can kind of learn more about them, their company, their products, their services, the brands, the ideas, their challenges, their struggles, their frustrations, like all these things we need to know, we need to learn. So, let's talk about that engaging of the prospect side of things. Yeah, absolutely. So um, once we identified our customer, um, created content, we want to, of course, um, you know, the content has to have a strategy behind it. It's not just uh, like, hey, I want to go create a video. I mean, there has to be a strategy behind how we want to um, create our message and how we want to incorporate that into the content. So really, the content is going to be um, an engagement or, or an, a nurturing um, sequence that we're going to create um, over a period of time. So we want to make sure that people are engaging with our content, that they're, you know, they're liking it, they're following it, they're 
hearting it on on Instagram um, because, uh, of course, that's how we're going to um, add value to our prospects and bring them in um, and to the fold. And so, as I mentioned earlier, when I was talking about content, um, we want to ascend our users over a period of time and, um, and basically have them learn more about what it is that we do. And I guess also taking a step back here. So part of it is like, of course, we want to learn who our ideal target market is, and that's really what we talked about in the first step. But we also want to share what our what we're about. So, what is our, our brand story? What is our mission? What's our vision? And weave that also into um, into a nurture sequence and into the content that we're creating. So, it's not just about you know the the actual target market, but it's also about us and how um, because there, these people who are prospects and who are engaging with us are going to um, either you know like it or not like it. And so having that brand story out there, it, I think, is important because we want to, of course, share um, what we're all about and and have them engage with us even further. So um, having a, a nurture sequence uh, where we ascend users and and show them more content and more information about our, what our brand story is and how our products and services can help um, our audiences in the long run. So Gene, I like sharing specific examples. So I'm going to share a specific example of sure. one of my nurture sequences. And I would then love for you to be thinking in the background about a specific one that you're going to share with us as well, because I think that I could definitely learn from that. I know Fire Nation could too. So, you know, for, for instance, one of the top of my funnels right here is the podcast Entrepreneurs on Fire. You know, at the outro, I might give a call to action of saying, hey, if you're listening right now and you love this content, but you're thinking this is a cool medium of podcasting, like, hey, maybe you want to start your own podcast. So I have a completely free course for you. Go check out freepodcastcourse.com. It's free. It'll it'll teach you how to create, grow, and monetize your podcast. Boom, you're off to the races. My listeners who want to learn more about podcasting will go take that completely free course. And then guess what? On that free course, I'll also say, by the way, I offer a completely free live webinar that I do every other week. So come learn more content about podcasting and plus ask me any questions that you've been gathering over my free course and just the different things you've been consuming. And then people will come to that live webinar. Then on that live webinar, I'll give an hour of value. And then I'll say at the end, hey, some of you probably want to join a premium podcasting community with all the video tutorials, community. We have a Facebook group, all the stuff that you need check out Podcasters Paradise. And then boom, that's kind of this sequence I've taken people through by creating them free, valuable, and consistent content all the way along. So what would you say is a nurture sequence that you've seen or you currently do that you think that we could learn from and, and uh, really take a lot of notes from? Yeah, absolutely. I can actually use an example from one of my clients. Um, and we created a nurture sequence and the client um, does a a running digital product. So it's like a running school, but online. And so there's like videos. Uh, that's the that's the final product, the paid product. So there's like videos on how to how to best run and how to have like good running form. So um, the way I created that nurture sequence was we ran Facebook ads and we ran them to uh, a what we call, I guess, like a launch sequence. So there were three videos, three free videos. So you would sign up um, on the landing page and there would be three videos in you know, three days that talked about a specific point in, in how to run best and how to have good running form. And so that was the, um, that was, I guess the top, I would say the top of the funnel. And then we added additional content, uh, more in-depth content. So it's a, if they engage with those three initial videos, um, we had additional content and then we drove them to a free webinar, which again had more deeper content. So we were just engaged, engaging those uh, users who were interested even further. Um, and then on the webinar, we uh, sold the actual final product, which was the running school course. So Fire Nation, you can start to see how these funnels work, you know, how you're adding value, how you're building that know, like, and trust along the way. I mean, this is just all important things to make sure that you're doing these things right. And we've been dropping value bombs all up over the place, and we have more coming in the second half of this interview with Gene. But first, we're going to take a second chat with Billy Jean, and then we will be right back. 
Fire Nation, if you don't ever want to worry about your income, you need to acquire skills that solve a serious problem in the marketplace. Right now, there's a major problem every business in the world has, acquiring more customers. This is a skill that these companies will never learn on their own because they're too focused on the gazillion other things going on in their business. This is where you come in. You can acquire the skill set necessary to give the gift of new customers to these businesses through paid ads. It isn't an easy skill to acquire, and that's exactly why it's so valuable. Once you take the time and put in the effort to learn this skill, your craft becomes instantly desirable, and you can command premium dollars in exchange for your time and effort. The best part is, you can start learning how to do this today for free. My friend Billy Jean is a master when it comes to acquiring customers, and he has a free training that will teach you exactly how to do it in any niche. Visit watchbillysvideo.com to access his free training today. That's watchbillysvideo.com in order to acquire a skill set no one can ever take away from you. Ignite. So Gene, we're back from chatting with Billy Jean, and I would like to chat with you now about actually filling this funnel with Facebook ads because Facebook ads has such a great way to target and to make sure that you are only having your ads seen by people that need to be seeing it, et cetera. I mean, it's just such a great opportunity that Mark Zucks and company have created for us. And, you know, this is not going to be as great of an opportunity forever as it is right now because more and more of the big boys and big girls are finding out about this, pouring millions and millions of dollars into this. And guess what? Everything about this is supply and demand. So as demand goes up, supply goes down, price goes up. We know how that works. So talk about filling the nurture funnel with Facebook ads and kind of how you've done this with clients and how Fire Nation could really learn from your experiences. Absolutely. So so once we create the funnel uh, and we gave some examples earlier, um, it might just be sitting there, but we also need to fill the funnel. So we need to bring in new people, new prospects who might be interested in our product. So um, I have been using Facebook advertising with for my business and for my clients' businesses in the last several years. And I totally agree with you in the sense that you know, supply and demand, and there are so many more businesses now that are using Facebook. So it's driving up the prices. So um, one of the things I was just listening to recently, um, a, a talk by Gary Vaynerchuk. I'm sure everybody's familiar with him, Gary V. Um, and one of the things he was talking about just in the last month, he's like, hey, um, Instagram and Facebook, um, especially Facebook, you know, the next 12 to 18 months is going to be where we're going to find the most value when it comes to paid media. But after that, you know, things are probably going to get a little more expensive and our CPMs and CPCs are going to go up. But really now is the time to focus on um, Facebook advertising. And why I love the platform so much, and you touched on it briefly, is that there's such amazing targeting within Facebook that I think that I have not been able to find with any other advertising platform. So you can really narrow down your audiences and get in front of the niche market that you created when we were talking about your ideal target market. So you can uh, slice the data by geolocation, by, of course, age and gender, but also by interest. So if people are interested in running, if people are interested in peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, um, you can find those audiences and get really specific and get really niche because we don't want to be spending our budget on audiences that are not interested in engaging with us. So that's why I feel it um, and I see the results with Facebook advertising and why um, Facebook ads have been um, working so well. And again, going back to video, such uh, I, I, video has been such a, an amazing and a, just a, a really results-driven component of it all. And uh, one of the ways I've been working with my clients is, is having them create video ads so that way uh, people, users can engage further um, and just have that better understanding of what the company does, what the brand is all about, what the founder is all about um, through uh, video ads. Fire Nation, I've got some truth to drop on your head right now. Not every person buys the first time they see your offer. It's sad, but it's true. And I'm a big believer in this, actually. The old rule of advertising still applies about people needing to see things, you know, a few times, like up to seven times in, in certain things before they feel comfortable. You know, we like to, to feel comfortable and to know something and to like something and to trust something. And that's why, you know, people that have listened to hundreds and hundreds of my episodes, you know, haven't hesitated to buy things like the Freedom Journal and Mastery Journal because, you know, they've heard me talk about it. They've heard me talk before. They built that know, like, and trust. 
And that's something you're going to have to be bringing into your world. So that's why when we were talking about content marketing earlier, and now we're talking about this, you need to be thinking about different ways that you're making this happen, about being seen in multiple areas by multiple uh, in multiple places as well. And that's why remarketing methods are absolutely critical. So we can bring users back into our funnel, bring them back, like maybe they left or maybe they were never fully in the first place and engage them further and importantly, engage them in different ways. Like maybe if you just tweak how you're offering something, how you're wording something, it's going to appeal to them in the way that your your previous communication didn't. So for instance, you know, if you're targeting that mother between the ages of 30 and 45, you know, you might just word the exact same offer in a different way and it just might strike a bell for some reason. It might really strike that chord with her. You just don't know. That's why you have to test. And that's why you have to remarket. So, Gene, you're great at this. Talk to us about remarketing, how people are doing it right, how people are doing it wrong, and how we should be doing it moving forward. Well, I'd say the first thing is everybody should be doing remarketing. Um, and I find that a lot of times when I engage with new clients, um, that's not a strategy that they are implementing. And it is such an easy and such a low uh, cost effective strategy. And anytime somebody asks me like just off the bat, like, hey, if I were to do one thing in my business now that's related to digital marketing, what would it be? And I always say it's retargeting or remarketing. So um, if you're currently not implementing that strategy, then I highly recommend it. And I'm going to get into what that looks like. So uh, thank you for actually describing what remarketing is, but basically it's a way to bring users back who have already engaged with you. Um, it does require a little bit of technology involvement and, and placing some pixels um, on your website, but that's uh, that's it shouldn't scare anybody. Um, uh, technology and, and pixels are, are, are friends, not foes. Um, <laughs> and maybe just real quick, Gene, explain pixels just for you know those of us who might not quite 100% know what that is. Absolutely. So a pixel is just a piece of code that relays data back between two systems. So in this case, for example, let's use the Facebook pixel as the example. So um, you would place a Facebook pixel on your site and it would just be a piece of code that goes onto every page of your site. And what it does is it just relays data back between your site and, and the Facebook, um, I guess, metrics or the Facebook reporting system. So it's uh, it, that's just really the whole idea of a, of a pixel. Any pixel doesn't have to be Facebook, but it's just a way to relay data back and forth. So like basically two systems are talking to each other. Um, so, uh, going back to remarketing, um, uh, um, and Facebook pixel. So again, don't, no need to be afraid of them. I know so many people get <laughs> really tongue tied when I start talking about, uh, p p pixels or Facebook pixels, but basically it's a way to bring users back who have already engaged with you. And if a user has engaged with you, they're much more likely to purchase your products or engage with you further. If they already have learned more about, let's say your brand story, your messaging, you know, and what your company is all about. And uh, there's a couple of, a few ways uh, that I have used remarketing for my own company, for my own company and for my clients' companies. Um, and a lot of, a number of them have been through Facebook. And so it's just a matter of creating a, an ad, but also creating audiences that are a pool of audiences that, again, have engaged with your brand. And there's a couple ways of doing it on Facebook. So you can uh, create a pool of audiences who have been to your website. You can also create a pool of audiences who have watched any of your videos that you have posted on Facebook. So again, anybody who has watched uh, videos are more likely to engage with you because if they have already seen you um, on video, then um, they're, they're probably interested in what you have to say. And with Facebook, you can do um, three seconds. Uh, anybody who's watched three seconds of your video, 10, 25%. Um, 50 and so on and so forth. So there's different types of engagement. So if anybody, if somebody has seen, let's say 100% of your video, that's a pretty good indicator that they're probably, um, probably pretty engaged. And additionally, you can retarget users who have engaged with your Facebook page. So um, anybody who is engaged with anything really related to you on um, Facebook. And then um, you can also upload your email list. So for example, if you have um, an email list um, that you've already been using, you can take that information, take those emails and put it uploaded to Facebook and Facebook will match up users based on their username within the platform. And then you can remarket again to that. And I've seen that work really well because with email, um, 
you know, it's, the results haven't been there really recently. I mean, it's, people are still opening their emails, but at the same time, um, it's kind of been declining a little bit from what I'm It's declining. Seeing. I mean, it's just, a, again, it's a matter of supply and demand and everything is Fire Nation. I mean, now, you know, everybody and their mother who pretends that they're an entrepreneur or a marketer is sending a million emails a day and it's just overwhelm and overload. Yeah. And with Facebook ads, hey, this is a pay to play market. So if you're able to get into that pay to play market, you will be seen, period. So back to you, Rebecca. I mean, back to you, Gene. With email campaigns maybe not being as effective as before, a good way to uh, remarket to those users is to put upload your email list to Facebook um, and, and put a, a message or an ad in front of them. So that way, if I'm not opening your email, at least I'll be at least seeing your ads on Facebook. So I think remarketing it, or retargeting, as we call it, is just um, an amazing method. It's very cost effective um, and you can get really good results you know, with spending just five, ten dollars a day um, and getting that pool of audiences who have engaged with you and engage with them even further. I love all of this, Fire Nation, because I want you, everybody listening, to be a pro. It's, it's not about being an amateur. Stop being an amateur if you were one. Become a pro. Be a professional. I mean, if you're going to spend all the time and all the money doing the things that we've already discussed, all those things we've already discussed, you have to take this next step now. You have to take the next step and actually review these analytics. Review these analytics because then once you do that, you'll be able to optimize your campaigns and you need to do this because listen, you can do the last nine steps that we just talked about, but if you don't do this final step, you are going to miss all all the gold of all that work that you put in, that content marketing, of all this money you put in with the ads and the remar- and retargeting and all this stuff, the gold is in reviewing your analytics so that you can optimize your campaign. So Gene, talk to us about this. Yeah, so that's a key component also. I mean, of course, all of, all of the points we just mentioned, I think are key, but this is, I think, one that is very uh, much missed among entrepreneurs. You know, um, everybody gets really excited about getting engagement on social media, but then they forget to um, take a look at how their campaigns are performing. So, um, and, and the, really the main reason for that, why we need to keep an eye on our metrics is we want to see how, what kind of return on investment are we getting? So if we're spending a hundred dollars on a Facebook ad and, um, nobody's signing up with us and, um, and you know, we're not getting any revenue on anybody buying our products and we really need to make sure that we're getting a positive ROI. So if that's happening, then we need to tweak our ads or tweak our funnel. So, um, I'd say the main, um, metrics that I would definitely keep an eye on are going to be. Um, if you're using Facebook advertising, definitely keep an eye on how are users engaging with you, um, uh, how how many people are, let's say, filling out your web forms or your lead mag or uh, picking up your lead magnets, and then how many people are actually purchasing your product on the back end. I would also take a look at your nurture funnel sequences and keep an eye on those metrics as well because you want to see how many people are opening up your emails and clicking through and purchasing your products. And then of course on remarketing campaigns um, of the people who ha- who you have engaged with previously and brought them into the funnel um, later on through remarketing campaigns, uh, what kind of metrics are you seeing? Things like click through rates and um, conversions on your lead magnet or your web forms. And of course, conversions on your final products, um, the, the paid products. So, um, reviewing these analytics on a regular basis. I mean, I'd say when you're first getting started, keeping an eye on them on a, on a daily basis for sure. But as your campaigns maybe get more mature and you're seeing good results, um, I would say at least a few times a week to um, ensure that you're still ROI positive on your campaigns. And I'd say, you know, it's okay to be not ROI positive in the beginning because in the beginning you're testing things out, you're investing some budget into the testing. So it's okay and I wouldn't, um, you know, I wouldn't cut the campaigns right off the bat. But um, if you're not seeing results, you know, after a couple of weeks, then I would say there's, that's when the time is to tweak every, you know, to tweak, let's say, your Facebook ads or to tweak your funnel. So, um, so don't get too discouraged if, let's say, you're not seeing results right off the bat uh, because everything will require testing when it comes to digital marketing. Fire Nation, don't let this overwhelm you. You know, this is a one step at a time thing. You implement one thing and then it's the next thing and then it's the next thing. And I love that quote by Martin Luther King Jr., 
you don't have to see the whole staircase to take the next step. Like you don't have to understand how this process works all the way through right now. You just have to take that first step and then say, okay, I've done that first step. Like I'm creating that content or whatever that first step might be for you. And then guess what? Then that next step will be a lot easier for you to attain and understand and get going. And then before you know it, you're like, oh my goodness, now I'm telling my friends what a pixel means because they don't know what it means. And that's literally how it happens. So Gene, we've gone through some amazing points today. You draw some incredible value bombs. Why don't you tie this up with a bow? Like, why don't you su- uh, give it a little summation here of what we've chatted about? And uh, then we'll move on to the last part of the interview and say goodbye. Yeah, thank you very much for having me on the show. This has been um, an amazing experience. And I love to give my uh, book away for free. I don't know. I don't think we talked about the book. No, we haven't. Let's talk about it. (laughs) Um, So yeah, so I'm a number one bestselling author on Amazon. And uh, my book is called Win New Customers, How to Attract, Connect, and convert more prospects into customers in 60 days using digital marketing strategies. And I'd say one thing that I I definitely would want to touch on is, you know, you mentioned like, don't get overwhelmed in it in in doing all of these things all at once. Well, one of the things um, I have in the book is actually a 60. So it talks about 60 days using digital marketing strategies. And I have a, a worksheet that talks about how to create all of this in 60 days. So that way you're not doing everything all at once. Um, but it's spread out over two months where you could create all of these campaigns, but not, not get overwhelmed because you will have two months to or 60 days to create them. So I'd love to give my book away for free. It's going to be in PDF format as a uh, PDF format as an instant download. So if you go to geneginsburg.com backslash fire, geneginsburg.com backslash fire, and I'm sure you can probably put that in the show notes. And uh, I'd love for you to guys to take a look at my book. And of course, um, the, all of the information we talked about today, all of those points um, are all in the book as well, but in more detail. I can only cover so many things in, uh, in today's uh, podcast episode. Fire Nation, all I can say is I'm going to be downloading this PDF. I'm going to be having myself and my team go through this because this is the kind of stuff that makes sure that you continue to win as an entrepreneur. That's by you winning new customers, period. So Gene, just give us maybe a parting piece of guidance. Like what is something that you think, you know, in your years of experience and what you see working right now, like what's a parting piece of guidance for us? And then we'll say goodbye. Absolutely. Uh, the one piece of advice I always have, I say the number one piece of advice, I have probably multiple pieces of advice, (laughs) but the number one is as an entrepreneur, never stop learning um, because it really goes hand in hand. So being an entrepreneur goes hand in hand with continuously learning, whether it's your craft, whether it's being a good leader, whether it's being a good manager. So I go through books and audio books and podcasts and um, digital courses on a, on a daily basis. So for me, it's been um, such an eye-opening experience going through all of that information. And it's just, I feel like it's made me a much better entrepreneur. Absolutely, Fire Nation. And I'm being genuine when I say things like, I'm going to go through this free book that, that Gene's giving because I never stop learning. I never want to. I never want my team to. That's what we do. Everything's always changing. Opportunities are always popping up. Keep on learning and fire nation you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with so you've been hanging out with jg and jld today so keep up the heat and like gene mentioned you can just head over to eofire.com type gene in the search bar and her show notes page will pop up with everything we've been talking about today links to the free book which again directly uh the direct url to that is gene ginsburg.com slash fire That's Gene, J-E-A-N, Ginsburg, G-I-N-Z-B-U-R-G, dot com slash fire. And that's her book, Win New Customers. And you're going to get this for free. Get over there. And Gene, I want to say thank you for sharing your journey with Fire Nation today. For that, we salute you and we'll catch you on the flip side. Awesome. Thank you. Hey, Fire Nation. Hope you enjoyed our chat with Gene today. And I want you to come up with your big idea because either you don't have an idea right now, Fire Nation, or you have a bunch of ideas and you're not sure which is the big idea. That's why I've spent so many personal JLD hours sweating over and creating this three-hour training that's completely free, three hours to your big idea. That is three hours to your big idea. And that's the promise. In three hours, you will have your big idea. You'll be ready to crush it. You'll be ready to focus. You'll be ready to dominate three hours to your big idea. So just visit yourbigidea.io and I'll catch you on the flip side. 
Fire Nation, if you don't ever want to worry about your income, you need to have skills that solve a serious problem in the marketplace, like helping businesses acquire more customers. This is a skill that most companies will never learn on their own because they are too focused on the gazillion other things going on in their business. My friend Billy Jean is a master when it comes to acquiring customers and has charged up to $30,000 a month to provide this simple but not easy service. To learn how you can do this too, visit watchbillysvideo.com to access his free training today.